QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Accounts Receivable Graphs. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page to the gray area. View drop down, noting that we got the hide icon bar and open windows checked off. We got open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial. Let's take a look at the profit and loss income statement. Change that range. 01, 01, 24, 212, 31, 24. January to December, customizing it so we can go to the fonts, changing it to 12. Okay, yes, okay. Reports one more time. Uno Vase Boss, not the profit and loss, but the balance sheet. And then we'll hit the drop down again. We're looking for this fiscal year this time. And then we're gonna go to the customized reports, fonts and numbers, change the font to 12, okay, yes, okay. That's what we've been doing every time, opening up the major two financial statement reports. All other reports, pretty much, are giving some kind of information adding to one or multiple line items on the major two financial statement reports that we have here. This time we're gonna look at some graphs and we're gonna specifically look at graphs that are gonna be supporting backing up the accounts receivable account. You'll recall the accounts receivable account represents money that is owed to us for services or goods that we provided customers owing us money. The accounts receivable goes up. If I go back to the homepage with an invoice, which you would only use if you're using an accrual basis rather than a cash basis, accounts receivable being a accrual account. So if I go back over here and then it goes down when we, when we receive the payment. So we can find these reports by going to the reports drop down. You would think it would be under the customers and receivables. And we've got this nice little receivable graph here. We can also find it by going to the report center up top. Let's do that now. The report center will maximize that to the gray area. We'll go to the customers and receivables. And there is the graph. Let's open that up. Now notice for internal use, when you're doing the actual you know, bookkeeping process and trying to collect on the receivables, this might not be the most useful tool for that purpose because you'll probably be working there within the customer center and so on and running other reports like an AR aging report. However, if you are providing this information externally, possibly as a bookkeeper monthly to the owner or possibly in, uh, in an accounting department, you might want the pictorial representations. The graphs can be nice to be adding. Uh, so they give you this nice little custom graph here. Also note that you could make graphs like this, which we will do in a future presentation with some of the sub ledger reports. So we will take a look at that in the future. Okay, so we have up top, we've got the date, we've got the print, we've got the refresh. They give you two things here. We've got the basically the aging graph up top. And then we've got the pie chart and that's broken out by who owes us uh, the money, the customers in essence. Let's change the date up top. We can change the date and make it as of 12, 31, 2, 4. So it's as of a point in time report instead of a range report because it's supporting a balance sheet line item seen or giving us a pictorial representation of where we stand at a certain point in time. So, so then let's go ahead and see, this is the 9810519. If I go back to the balance sheet, there's the, the 9810519. The subsidiary report to this would be if we go to the reports drop down and we go to customers and receivables. Let's take a look at the customer balance summary. Customer balance summary report. 
and we'll make this we'll let, we'll keep it there it's as of today let's make it from 0101 uh to 4 to 12 31 to 4 so there we have it and now this is let's go ahead and customize this fonts and numbers bring it up to 12 so we can see it a little bit more clearly okay so now we've got this broken out by customers it's a little bit more complicated because we have the sub customers here so you've got some drop downs which you might not have so much if you didn't have like this particular company being a job cost company with the with the sub customers or jobs but we can see the total down here 98 105 19 we can see that should tie out to the balance sheet that should tie out then to our uh, report with our chart here 198 105 15 and then if we look at some of our larger customers we've got Robert for example if I go to Robert and we say we've got and if I do the ratio, this is how we're calculating this. We're doing a ratio calculation. We're taking the total, which is equal to the 14510 divided by the total down here, divided by the 98105.19. And that's going to give us our 14.7 about. We go back to our chart. There's where we get the 1479 uh, about percent if we move the decimal two places over so clearly the, the charts can be nice pictorially to be providing if you are doing a a presentation especially if you're doing a presentation and or if you're giving this chart to someone as part of the package that you're giving them on a monthly basis or something like that you do of course want to be ready for someone to say well that's a nice colorful pie chart what does it mean <laughs> right and of course what it means is we're we're basically taking that report here and we're breaking down the largest customers who owes us the most amount of the accounts receivable. Notice, I believe they use like 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then everything else, they just dump into the other category down below. So we're taking a pie chart, which is taking our top 10 people that owe us money in accounts receivable, taking the ratio of how much they owe as compared to the total, and then everything else above that 10 is being grouped together in the other category. So in future presentations, we'll actually make this report from this by exporting it to Excel and then making the graph in Excel. The, the benefit of making a graph in Excel is that once you get familiar with doing it, and it's not too difficult to do, any kind of graph that lends itself to a pie chart or any kind of graph you can take the source data and just export it to Excel, which is actually a more efficient way to do it. It's a little bit more time consuming to do it, but you have a lot more options to do that. Notice if I go over here, I can't adjust say the format of this pie chart, for example, they've got like this 3D look on the pie chart. I can't really adjust the, the colors of it or, or make it larger or smaller or anything like that. It is what it is. It's fairly nice. It's really easy to pull up, but you know, we can't do anything else to it. Notice that the fact that it is a 3D pie chart is kind of a confusing thing. I personally don't like the 3D pie charts because they can be deceptive. To me, it, it makes me feel like someone's doing some kind of marketing trick because it makes like, for example, whatever's up front look larger than this one. So notice that this pie over here at 14.17 is a lot bigger than the 8.79 of this red slice. But the red slice, because it's over here, is, is looking bigger and it kind of distorts things. So it looks cool. It's a nice effect. But if someone's trying to be manipulative, then they can use this distortion to manipulate the, the look and feel of the pie chart. And I don't, I don't like that because it's supposed to be something that's going to give clarity to the picture, not distort the picture. So, so in any case, you can't really, so you can change those kind of effects and so on if you were to export this to uh, Excel. So then we've got this one up top and that's going to be the aging report. So if I go to my reports drop down and we go to the, uh, the customers and receivables and we look at the accounts receivable aging as of 12.31.24. So now we've got the, the, this is the report that breaks out the stuff that's currently due and then the reports that are 1 to 30 days, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and so on and so forth. And then that's going to be a percentage of the total. So for example, most of it is all current in this case. So that chart's not that exciting looking. 
but we have 5,000 in the 61 to 90 divided by or compared to 98105.19. That gives us our 0.05 or 5% that we see uh, over here. This should be about 5% that we see here as compared to everything else being in the current area. Now, if you were to put this in a presentation, of course, you can print this chart out. So you can go to the printing options up here and notice it doesn't give you the printing as a PDF option, but you could save it as a PDF using the Qt PDF printer, which remember is a free tool. Some PDF printer can allow you to use the printing option to print it as a PDF or make it a PDF using the printing tool. I believe you can Google Qt PDF printer. We're not affiliated with them and uh, and you can get a PDF printer and be able to print it that way. Uh, another way you might do it in a presentation is you might is you might take like a a slide that you want to put this information on. You can go to insert up top in in, in any kind of Microsoft uh, Microsoft program, Microsoft Office that is. And then I want to take a screenshot. You can also use screenshot using you know word snippet or something like that. But I want to take a clipping of the screen so I can take a clipping of the screen and I might then say, OK, maybe I'm just going to clip this here and I'll put that in place. Maybe I don't even need the title because maybe I put the title uh, up on the top of the slide so I could then crop this. So maybe I crop up top and I remove that. Whoop, hold on a second. Undo that. I can I can remove that. I can crop that out. Maybe I want to get rid of the white background. You could do that in like, this is PowerPoint. You can say, remove the background. And then uh, I wanna keep like this area. So I'm just gonna keep that till it, till it which ones you were messed up. Keep that, keep that. And there it is. Is that one kept? I think so. So there it is. So now you've got your graph. There's one little piece down here. Keep that. So there it is. And then and then I could I could insert the key then. I could say I'm gonna go up here. Where was it? My screen is large, so the icons are all a little different. Screenshot, we're gonna insert the key. And we can put this over here, boom, on this side, or something like that. And you could format it however you would like to. You could use the, the quick formatting tools, might be useful over here, but you can then format it however you would like to in that way. That's one way you might kind of easily add it, you know, into a presentation without having to export it to Excel or anything like that. You can also do that or add these graphs to your uh, Excel file if you so choose that you can make into a PDF, which we might do at the end of this whole presentation. But it is somewhat limited. Uh, it's a lot limited in terms of a graph. and it might be better to get used to actually seeing where's the report get the report information export it to uh, excel and then be able to make your graphs because that allows you to know how to make the graphs it allows you to adjust the graphs you can do a whole lot more with the key and the format of the chart and and how you want to represent this information you could actually just take the percentages over here and type that into excel but we're going to do that next time. We're going to go to the to this actual report or one of these reports, the customer balance report, most likely. Uh, customer balance report like this one, and we'll export it to Excel and then we'll try to create a graph with it. That'll be great.